The S&P 500 is up almost 20% year to date with an average return of 10% per year in the last 50 years. Will it continue to provide 10% per year in the future? It's possible, but not likely. Hi, I'm Ryan, the Frugal Analyst, and in this video, I'm going to share my S&P 500 return projection for the next decade. As a quick background, the S&P 500 invests in the largest 500 US companies, and it is accessible through many different funds with some of the lowest fees in the industry. In addition, the index is well diversified with companies representing all sectors of the economy. On average, it has a solid track record of 10% annual return per year. The big question is, will it continue to provide strong returns in the future? I think returns in the future might be weaker than usual, and I'll go over my thinking in this video. Now, I'm a big fan of the S&P 500 index. I previously made a video on why it could replace a savings account, mainly because the chance of making money is very likely over short or long periods of time. Also, with inflation, it is better invested in actual companies that generate value versus holding cash. When we think about investing, we usually need some return scenarios. What is the base case if everything goes as I expected? What is the bullish case or bearish case when things go differently? There are many metrics to evaluate the market. The one metric I like to use is the forward PE ratio. Forward PE is dividing the price of the stock by the estimated profits next year. Multiple analysts generate these estimates and larger companies will have more analyst coverage. Of course, these estimates are not always right, but on average, especially when we use it on an index with hundreds of companies, it tends to predict pretty well. Now for the S&P 500 index, the forward PE is currently around 21. To explain what this means, if there's a company estimated to make $100 profits next year, the current price of the company today with a forward PE of 21 is $2,100. In another perspective, if you divide one by the four PE, you get 4.7%. This is the estimated return you will get from your investment if the profit stays flat forever. You will need 21 years of earnings before recouping the money spent on purchasing the business. Now, coming back to the S&P 500 index, if we use the historical four PE to invest, what are the returns? Financial Times published this chart looking at the forward PE and their annual return over the next 10 years. It seems like the sweet spot is anything less than 15 forward PE. Afterward, you get a mediocre return of less than 10% per year. And once you get over 22 forward earnings, the return is practically zero or negative. If I layer in one divided by the forward PE in the orange X, it looks like this. In general, the higher the forward PE, the lower the rate of return, and today's forward PE is pretty high at 21. Now you can look at this chart and think that the return will be 0% in the next 10 years or negative. I will put that as the bearish case. This might happen when profit stays flat and investors want a higher rate of return. In our last example of a $100 profit company, and if the forward PE changed to 15 in the future because people want more return, then the company is worth 30% less than what it was at 21 Ford PE. This has happened in the past after the 2000.com bubble where Ford PE start to drop and investors want a higher rate of return, pushing prices lower. Another scenario would be if earnings went down. It's possible like in the 2008 where earnings went down 80% in a year, but that is unlikely given the stimulus and inflation. I think good companies will continue to have pricing power in the long run to withstand inflationary periods. So overall, there are downsides. Now there are upsides as well. The base case is purely thinking that the forward PE will stay as they are at 21 and companies will continue to make the same amount of profits. At the current forward PE, it'd be close to 5% per year or one divided by the forward PE ratio now on the upside for the bullish case, the forward PE can also increase from the current level and in turn increases returns. Although I would think that an increase in forward PE from this level is a bubble territory rather than a long-term trend. Now bubbles do happen all the time and it wouldn't surprise me if we go higher because there's no better place to invest. Another upside is earnings can also be better than expected. This might happen if more stimulus happens or if companies can tackle inflation by having the pricing power to increase price and overall increases profits. 
At the end of the day, my current expectation for the S&P 500 is between 0% to 10% per year with a base case of 5% per year. This is half of the average S&P 500 historical return and really points to the expensive equity prices today. Generally, 5% seems small, but it is still better than nothing. I would still recommend the S&P 500 index as a default investment unless you have an investment that brings in 10% or better return. As a reminder, the key to investing is really about asset allocation and staying invested in the markets. Small gains add up over time and give more financial flexibility in the future. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe for more frugal videos. I'll see you next time.